Let's read. Another viewer question. This time is from Ruby or Lisa. Hi. When exactly is the start of growing season? I'm not sure when is the best time to propagate. Thank you. You know, Ruby, that's a very loaded question. Because firstly, the climate differs across across many parts of the globe. <laughs> so imagine Zaki's head. <laughs> Come here, here, here. Sit. So imagine that Zaki's head is a globe. The North Pole is here, and the South Pole is in the chinny chin chin. <laughs> so this is the equator around the nose. Where's the nose here? <laughs> and the cheeks so since because of the slight huh? tilt of the huh? globe something like this they receive different amount of sunlight throughout the year at some point during the year when it is when it is summer in the northern hemisphere the opposite is true in the southern hemisphere it would be winter <laughs> and when we are in the opposite direction when it is winter in the northern hemisphere, then the southern hemisphere will be in summer. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> summer, winter, and summer. And not to mention the climate along the equator near the tropics. It would be different from the climates at the extreme ends of the globe. So to summarize, they are not all the same. So you have to take note of those differences. The second thing to take note of is that the different plants have their own different dormancy schedules. Some are active during the warmer months and some are active during the cooler months. So all you have to take note is their dormancy periods. You might be able to find a dormancy table somewhere in the internet, but strictly speaking, it applies to temperate climates so where the, the winter and summer is, is very defined. But for some, for places in between, it might not necessarily apply to you. Because as you know, there's not much difference between winter and summer in the tropics. So going back to your question about when exactly, it's a really loaded question. So let me try to answer that in the context of my climate first down here in Melbourne. So I'm looking at the website right now about the weather in Melbourne. And it says here, Melbourne may be known for its fickle weather. The city has been described as having four seasons in a day. That's true. But it can be enjoyed all year round. Plan ahead with this information on temperature and rainfall. So, summer. Summer down here is from December to February. It's, so, as you know, this is the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. And Melbourne warms up in summer with mean temperatures between 14 to 25.3 degrees Celsius. That's about 57.2 to 77.5 Fahrenheit. These months are dry with occasional hot spells that can last more than three days. Our hot spells usually go in the excess of 40 degrees Celsius. That's about 120 Fahrenheit, I think. And the next season will be autumn, which starts, which goes from March to May. So autumn sees cooler weather with average, ten with average temperatures ranging from 10.9 to 20.3 Celsius. That's about 51.6 to 68.5 Fahrenheit. Morning fog usually clears to welcome fine sunny days. However, towards the end of the season, there can be extended periods of light winds. Next season, winter. So winter down here is from June to August and the average temperatures range from 6.5 to 14.2 celsius that's 43.7 to 57.6 fahrenheit and snow falls in the northeast of victoria known as the high country the weather is frequently cold and cloudy and nights can be accompanied by frost heavy rain is rare at this time of year in my years of stay in melbourne so far the lowest that it has gone in in our area is about zero it's just a bit over zero degrees, somewhere between zero and one degree Celsius. And lastly, spring is from September to November. Average temperatures range from 9.6 to 19.6 Celsius. That's about 49.3 to 67.3 Fahrenheit. This, this season is known as the most variable of the year, when weather can change quickly from calm and sunny to cold and windy. October is the wettest month with roughly 10 days of rainfall 
So if we go back to the charts, as you can see, the aeoniums are dormant during summer. So that means they're pretty much growing from autumn all the way to spring. So autumn, winter, then spring. The reverse is true for Echeverias. They are winter dormant, which means they are active during the warmer months. And that covers from spring, summer, then autumn. Right off the bat, you can tell that there's an overlap between them, the spring and the autumn parts. And all you have to be mindful really is the, the winter and the summer parts. Now this next part requires a bit of practice, I guess, or experience. You'd have to know how your plants would react when they are dormant. So you have to take note of their changes, the physiological changes, the shape, the size, uh, and all of those sorts of things. From experience, I've noticed that the echeverias are not really growing when the average temperature starts to go be below 15 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure how much that is in Fahrenheit. Once they go beyond 32, 35, and that's also when they start to protect themselves from the summer heat. As for aeoniums, I think, and this is just a guess, I think they go dormant when the temperatures the average temperature goes beyond 25 degrees Celsius. Whenever you reach those temperatures, you should treat them as dormant plants. They'll start closing up, and once the weather favors them again, they'll start opening up. Now, the tricky part is with the tropics. Because as you know, the weather, the climate is more or less the same the whole year round. Only it's, there's, a, there's only two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. And having lived in the Philippines for most of my life before moving here to Australia, I know how that feels, man. <laughs> so humid. There are, there are a few things that you can, you can do to offset this. And the first one would be, despite they're having a, a, higher, a higher average temperature, you can always alter your microclimates. And what that means is to, is to make modifications that, will, that would change the temperature of one area, one small area. <clears throat> An example would be adding a bit of shade. So let's say it's a 30 degree Celsius day. If you're sitting under a tree, you might feel the cool breeze. But under the tree, it, it feels much cooler compared to when you're out in the sun. So while it might be 30 degrees out in the sun, under the shade, it might be 5 to 10 degrees less. So that's something to keep in mind. As for shade, it's up to you how you, you have to be creative. You could use other plants or you could use a, a structure, artificial structure. Entirely up to you. In my case, now that it's summer, I'm using shade cloth. I prefer doing it this way because it is temporary and you can just remove it after summer. Explore your options and see and see what you are allowed to do. When it comes to rainfall, I guess you just have to improvise. So I, I made a video about it previously, about, about how to grow succulents in the tropics. So you just have to make sure that your medium is well draining and it doesn't retain too much moisture. So yes, pretty much it's all about compensation. So thank you for that question. I'll see you in the next video. Do it.